Okay, today I thought I'd show you a little trick, or maybe you'd want to call it a hack. Sometimes out here on the farm, I've got to do some cutting or drilling, and I'm just thousands and thousands of feet away from the nearest AC power. And sure, you can buy battery tools now that can do heavy-duty farm-type stuff, but they're super expensive. And if you've already got old tools, that can do the job, but just need AC power, or so you thought, you know, why buy new ones? Well, I've been doing for a long time now, ever since uh, things started using 40 and 80 volt batteries, for example. I have a lot of Atlas tools, and they've got the 40, 80 batteries, which basically means there's two 40 volt batteries in here, and you can hook them in parallel for a high current 40 volt, or you can hook them in series for uh, half the current 80 volt. And you can see here you've got two negatives here, two positives there. This negative and this positive, one of the 40 volts, and this negative and this positive are the other. So you can parallel these and pull out 40 that way if you want, or if you know that this is your, use this as your common ground. Here's the first positive, connect it back to this negative, and then pull your power from here and here, the two outside ones. Now you got 80 volts. So I 3D printed a simple little bracket the other day. Well, here's the reason why I did that. See this big hunk of steel? If I can get far enough back where you can kind of see it. This is part of a, it was buried in the ground. This end that's cut off goes way down in the ground to a cement slab. And this part sticks up and a guy wire connects in there and it helps hold a power pole. Well, it used to be a power pole on the property in place. The power pole is long gone, more than 24 years ago, but this was always sticking up out of the ground. So every time I'd be out there um, trying to mow that part of the field, I'd have to work around this. Could not pull it out of the ground. Couldn't pull it out with a tractor. Couldn't pull it out with a truck. Nothing. So eventually I just went, well, I'm going to go out there and cut it off. I got my 40, almost 50 year old Black & Decker with a fiber cutoff wheel on it. I'm going to slice that off. I didn't have any power out there. So decided to go ahead and run it because, you know, brush type heavy duty tools. These old saws like this. This half inch Black & Decker uh, drill, which you got to have this anytime you're mounting a, a tube uh, fence gate or drilling a hole into a well pipe to put in your pit connector or drilling holes in the frame of your truck to, to mount your trailer hitch. You got to have the heavy duty one. The new little battery wimpy ones can't even come close. And if you buy one of the really expensive ones that will, You've spent so much money, it's just, it's just insane. So if you've got the old tools and you can pick them up cheap, you just need a way to run them when you're not anywhere near power. So I made a little uh, 3D printed frame that can hold two of these 40 80 volt batteries. And in the case of cutting off that big hunk of steel, I'm going to slide this, slide this in on this 80 volt side. It's like that. Now with just this one battery, this outlet here will give me the full 80 volts in DC, which is fine for any brush tool, tools that have brushes on the motor. And uh, if I need the full 120, if I slide the second battery in over here, I can get 120 volts DC, because this one I have wired as a 40 volt battery. This one I have wired as an 80 volt. Now, a lot of times, uh, just 80 volts, just plug this cord into this old black inductor is more than enough. I cut that whole rod off. As you can see, that's uh, uh, it's almost an inch, three quarters, seven eighths steel. Cut that off really quick with this puppy. That's just running on the 80. And if you decided that you needed more, if you decided that you simply had to have the full 120 a oomph. You plug your second battery in, and I'll plug into this outlet over on this side now. Ah! 
just like if it was plugged in in the in the shop. Um, after I'd cut that bar using just the 80 and everything, you go, wow, I'll probably drain the battery. No, I started off with a, a full um, four bars charged on the battery, and after I was done doing the job, it was still a full four bars a job. In fact, I put the battery in my weed whacker and whacked, and then I put the battery in my mower and I mowed. I got battery on both those. So you can do that. Like I say, drills are fine because they have brushes. So they'll run AC or they'll run DC. So in this case, here would be what this drill would sound like on 80 volts. Super geared down, very powerful. You know, if the bit on that sticks, whatever you're drilling, it'll spin your body around or break your wrist. <laughs> Trust me, I know, I've been there. And here it is on the full 120 volts. The only thing you can't power with this is things that have to have alternating current. Like you're going, oh gee, I could plug some of my new uh, LED lights in here or something. No, most of the LED lights have a, uh, a switching power supply in them. Or if they're really cheap, they'll have just a, uh, a capacitor as a voltage dropper. A capacitive dropper, if you will. Again, those rely on having AC in order to work. If they're truly resistive, yes, then they would work. An old-fashioned light bulb with a filament, yes, it would work. Um, if you have a drill that has a speed control on it, some of those will work. The speed control will use a triac or an SCR in there to uh, turn the power onto the motor somewhere during the rise of the waveform and then shuts it off at zero cross and back and forth. So it, it uses the AC coming in, the sine wave, to chop it, it's kind of a pulse with thing, to control the speed. But if you don't have AC coming in, what happens is the drill just operates like a normal non-speed one, like this one is. It'll just turn on and off, most of them. I'm not going to say all of them. My little Black & Decker little uh, uh, standard chuck one over on my bench works just fine off of this. Although I don't know why I would use it, because usually if I'm doing something I need the extra power that you can only get from one of these big boys. Or I need to cut metal. I've cut uh, drainage ditch metal. I've cut uh, slots in the beds of truck for putting in fifth wheel uh, uh, attachments. Well, that was about it. I don't know. I mean, I could share these files. But I don't know how much good it's going to do you because you may not have the same brand of battery. But uh, these little contacts, I just got some copper. You can get copper at the hobby store, bend it through in the appropriate way. I guess if there was a lot of interest, I could uh, unscrew the back and I'd show you how the uh, connections are made and onto these AC receptacles. You know, in America, the receptacles, whether they're square or round, doesn't matter. You can separate the two sides. You know, whether the screws are on the sides where you hook your wires in, or right in between those screws is a little arch of metal. You can break that arch off, and now you have two separate outlets. In the case of this one, I left my negative connection, this bigger up one, just like you would a neutral at home. I left it intact because it goes to the bottom of my 80 volt battery no matter what. So that's basically ground coming down to that. This side is the one that I go ahead and broke that bridge out because that way I could bring the 80 volt tap up to this one and then it, once it goes through the 40 volt I could bring its tap up to the other one. So that's how I'm getting two different voltages out of what you're going, well that's just one plug in, it's one or several. No. You can break the little uh, link. They're made that way on purpose. You grab them with pliers, you twist them, and it breaks the little link off. And then you can uh, have two separate controls. In the houses, a lot of time that'll be uh, used so that you can have one outlet that's hot all the time, and maybe you have one outlet that's switched on and off. So that's why they do that. This whole thing was just printed on a uh, A1 Mini. So if you can print it on an A1 Mini, you can print it on anything because it's a very small build pretty much fills the build plate of the of the mini and um, I guess that's about it just a little hack in case you didn't know or if you had never heard of running uh, AC brushed tools off batteries 
you can do it. You could do it with a whole bunch of 12 volt batteries if you had them around. But now that there's so many tools out there, so many devices that use 80 volt batteries, you can stack them up. Or even if you just had devices that use just the 40 volts, get to two of them. You still got 80. It'll still run enough to, uh, to cut you some serious metal on the fly if you had to. And uh, of course, if you you could get three of them too, but I would never buy the battery to do this unless you didn't already have power tools that required them. I mean, I've got my lawnmower, I've got my uh, weed whacker, I've got my pole saw, and I've got my chainsaw, purposely all using this same battery. So yeah, I've got four of the batteries, so I always have some on charge and some I'm using. Plenty of battery power on here, but I didn't buy any of them to do this. I already had them, and it just made life easier being able to use the old, inexpensive tools anywhere on the property where there isn't AC power without spending all the money on new, fangled, battery-operated skill saws or battery-operated half-inch chuck power drills.